Hello and welcome to Slice of Ace. This is the final video in my video series on asexual relationships. While I'm talking at the moment, I'm going to link the videos at the top of the screen. I really need to remember which side of the screen is on, but at the top and also in the description below, you can find the links to all the videos in the series. I first talked about ace-ace relationships, then did two videos on ace-ally relationships, and to round it off, I'm going to be talking about non-traditional relationships. What is traditional, you may ask? Well, the definition I'm using today for traditional is a monogamous romantic relationship. So anything that doesn't fall under that bracket is going to be considered in this video. Of course, this isn't going to be a comprehensive documentary. I'm just going to cover what I think are the three main types of non-traditional relationship that are often mentioned within the asexual community. These are open relationships, polyamory, and queer platonic relationships, or QPR. If you're interested in solely a single part of the video, I will leave links in the description below for every part. So, with all that out of the way, let's get started. I'm going to begin this discussion talking about open relationships because out of the three that I have chosen, it is by far the simplest. An open relationship is a committed relationship where the people are allowed to pursue sexual interests outside of their relationship. In the case of ace allo relationships, the asexual could allow the allosexual to fulfill their sexual need outside of their relationship. This is particularly useful in ace allo relationships as it removes the pressure from the ace to compromise sexually solely for the benefit of the allo. How an open relationship works completely depends on the people involved. For example, some people may be happy letting their partner have one night stands with whomever they wish. However, some open relationships may be strictly regimented on who the people have sex with and how often. Of course, this isn't an exclusively asexual thing, but it can be very useful for some asexuals who are sex averse or don't want sex to be a part of their life at all, but they st still want a romantic involvement with someone who is allosexual. However, in this situation, communication is even more necessary than in an exclusive relationship. If the partners don't trust each other to stay loyal in their committed relationship, then this might not be ideal. Moving on to something which is very different, but people often get confused. Polyamory is when a person is open to multiple committed relationships. These can either be in the form of dating two or more people in separate relationships, or alternatively, having a relationship between three or more people. It is worth noting that someone can consider themselves polyamorous even if they are single. It is simply an openness and a desire to be dating more than one person simultaneously. As you can imagine, polyamory takes many different forms. I'm just going to go through some common examples now. From the research that I've done, these are often described using letters or shapes. Some common examples include a V. A V is where one person is in a committed relationship with two people, but those two people aren't in the committed relationship with each other. You might also have a pentagon, where everyone in the polyamorous relationship is in a relationship with two other people. Or a W, which looks like a W, and I could go on. So there really are many different ways that polyamorous relationships can form. And even within this, the types of relationships that are the people within a polyamorous relationship group will share could differ. Going back to the V structure, let's take this relationship between Bill, Elsbeth, and Kaylee. Bill is romantically involved with Elsbeth, but Elsbeth is both romantically and sexually involved with Kaylee. Kaylee and Bill may be friends, but they're not romantically or sexually involved at all. Similarly to open relationships, this can be a good way to alleviate the um, pressure of having to compromise for sex in an ace allo relationship. Really, in polyamorous relationships, the possibilities are endless. As this topic is so complex, I don't have time to go into it at this point in time, and if I did, I really would need someone in a polyamorous relationship to best explain it. However, I'm going to leave uh, some links in the description to resources that I have found useful in learning about polyamory. I'd like to thank the people on the Polyamory subreddit for smoothing out some of the miscommunication that I was brewing 
in my first take of this video. And finally we come to queer platonic relationships or QPR. If you don't like the word queer I've also heard this referred to as a quasi platonic relationship or QPR. A QPR is a non-romantic relationship that still has a strong emotional and platonic bond which transcends what is normally thought of as a friendship. So you may be wondering how you distinguish between a friendship and a QPR. Well, the level of commitment that you'd see in a QPR is often much greater than a friendship, to the point that it um, rivals that of a romantic relationship. So the people in a QPR might live together, they might raise children together, but they're just not romantically involved. In a romantic relationship, you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. So what do you have in a QPR? Well, somewhat strangely, um, your partner in a QPR is known as a zucchini, which is American for courgette, I believe. From what I understand, this started as a joke, but then caught on, and now everyone refers to each other as vegetables, which is hilarious and adorable. Once again, the benefits of this type of relationship for an asexual person are obvious. No sex. It is also particularly useful for people on the aromantic spectrum. Someone may want to have a committed relationship, but if they don't feel a romantic attraction, that leaves them in a bit of a bind, the same way as asexuality. So having a QPR is a really good way for an aromantic person to have a committed relationship without having to um, deal with the romantic side of it as well. Okay, that is all I had to say today on my whistle-stop tour of some alternatives to monogamous romantic relationships. These can be useful for people in the asexual community as it allows them to bypass that prerequisite that is sex. I will leave a bunch of links in the description which will go into much more depth so if you want to know more about any of these things then please check the links in the description below. I am not polyamorous, I've never been in a QPR or an open relationship so if I have misrepresented anything in this video please do tell me and I will do my best to amend it either in a future video or if it is irreparable I will take this video down and do it again. And that wraps up my series on asexual relationships. This was really just the surface level of all these topics. If there is something you want me to go into in more detail whether that be sharing my thoughts, getting the thoughts of the ace community or just exploring in more factual detail then please do tell me. Comment below. If you enjoyed this video then please leave a like, I post videos every Saturday, EXCEPT next Saturday. Next Saturday is going to be my week off because of Christmas and visiting family and such, but do not worry, the schedule will be back on as normal after next week. So if you want to see more then feel free to subscribe, that is all I had to say today, have a wonderful day and I shall see you next time. And QPR is defined... by something I need to look up because I don't want to get it wrong.